What's up guys, Sam here and welcome to episode two of Essential Film Gear where this week we're gonna be talking about camera gear and in particular, we're gonna be looking at the Canon T3i, otherwise known as the 600D. Before we get there, let me quickly point your attention to the pilot episode of this series where I discuss what I reckon is an absolutely essential piece of audio equipment when it comes to filmmaking, and that is the Zoom H4n, which is a digital audio recorder. Link is in the description below if you wanna check that out. So look, I could spend today doing a pretty standard review on my Canon T3i. I could chat about the features, the fact that it has an articulating screen, the cinematic image quality and so forth, but I think there's so many reviews out there already that I wanted to do something a little bit different. So today I'm gonna to keep things simple. I'm gonna give you the reasons why you would not wanna buy this camera. Now hear me out, I absolutely love this camera and I reckon it's a killer piece of camera gear, particularly if you're new into the DSLR world with it being obviously super affordable, plus it has some great killer features. If you're after some test footage, just watch any video that I've made over the past year. It's been an absolute workhorse and beast of camera and I can't speak highly enough of it and I definitely recommend it. But for the sake of keeping things simple and to the point, I'm only going to point out the negative features. So if there's something that you desperately need that's on this list, then you can quite easily rule it out. Okay, so negative feature number one is that it is not great in low light. So firstly, if you're shooting at an ISO of over 800, then your footage is gonna have a bunch of noise coming into the frame, which is absolutely gonna ruin your footage. But even if you are filming at an ISO of 400 or under, which is generally what I recommend, but let's say there's still some sort of darkness in the shot, often I've found that it will still produce some level of noise in those darker areas of the image. So the key to getting the most out of this Canon camera is making sure there is plenty of light. This is by leaps and bounds the worst feature of this camera and it does make filming a little inefficient at times, but I've made it work and when you do get enough light, it produces some gorgeous looking images. Negative feature number two, it does not have 4K. Being that this camera was released in 2011, which was well before the 4K revolution, the max resolution you can get out of this sensor is 1920 by 1080, otherwise known as Full HD. So for those wondering, Full HD is still through and through the industry standard when it comes to watching videos on YouTube and also what we're watching on our TVs. And I think when it comes to buying a camera with 4K, you're either A, looking to spend way more than what this Canon is worth, or B, if it is in a similar price bracket to this Canon, then the image quality is gonna be far um, inferior and you're not gonna get cinematic-like images that you can get when you're using a DSLR. So whilst I would tend to push you away from buying a camera purely because of its 4K abilities, particularly if you're new to cameras, it is important that you know that this camera cannot record 4K. Negative feature number three, it does not have slow-mo. Now this is a bit of a strange one, as a lot of DSLRs tend not to include slow motion features, so it seems weird to include this as a negative feature, but a lot of cameras that are geared more towards video and not still photography do tend to include slow motion, such as the GH4, the A7S and so on, so I thought it was worth mentioning in this video. Again, depending on what you're shooting, I would argue whether or not you actually need slow motion, particularly if this is going to be your first semi-professional camera purchase. But again, you now know it does not have slow motion. And finally, we come to negative feature number four, battery capacity. Across the board, video cameras and DSLRs are often hit and miss when it comes to battery life out of the box, and the Canon T3i is more of a miss in this department. It gets around 40 minutes of recording time, which isn't very much at all, so having a second battery on hand, or better yet, an external battery pack helps out big time here. But that does add to the overall cost, so keep that in mind. Now that's all the negative features that I could come up with for this camera, and so hopefully what this video has done is actually show you that it's a great camera. And when you consider the fact that it's under 500 US dollars, then I think it's a no-brainer in my mind that this is a great entry to mid-level camera purchase. Again, if you're looking for test footage, all you have to do is watch any of my videos over the past year. But that's it for today. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments below, but thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you guys later.